Dave Tomlin is a name you've probably never heard before, and frankly, I don't blame you. He was a relief pitcher who played in Major League Baseball for 13 seasons from 1972 to 1986. He played for four teams, but spent the most time with the San Diego Padres and Cincinnati Reds, the latter of which he helped guide to two playoff appearances. In his career, Tomlin pitched 511 and a third innings across 409 games. He holds a lifetime 25 and 12 record, 3.82 ERA, 93 adjusted ERA, 1.449 whip, and a negative 0.9 war. Not the best career, but he did have some decent seasons. In a three-year stretch for San Diego from 1975 to 1977, Tomlin threw over 250 innings, recording an ERA of 3.04, adjusted ERA of 114, a whip of 1.281, and achieving 2.9 war. In short, he had a below average career and probably isn't remembered by many, but stuck around the league for a while and had a few bright spots. Despite a forgettable career, Tomlin had one of the most bizarre seasons a pitcher has ever had in MLB history. The season in question is his 1978 campaign with the Cincinnati Reds. That season, he pitched 62 and a third innings across 57 games out of relief earning a 5.78 ERA, 62 adjusted ERA, a 1.893 whip, and achieving negative 3.1 war. Yeah, it was really bad, but at least he set a career high in saves with 4. For what it's worth, his FIP that season was 2 full runs lower at 3.77, a close mark to his career FIP entering that season, which was 3.54. That wild disparity in FIP is intriguing, but it's not even the most mind-boggling part of his season. What was the most bizarre part of Tomlin's 1978 season? His win-loss record. Despite starting zero games and having an atrocious ERA, Dave Tomlin had a win-loss record of 9-1. 9-1. That's not just a good win-loss record percentage, that's outstanding. How exactly does a relief pitcher with those awful stats win that many games with such few losses? And perhaps a better question, how often does something like this happen, as Tomlin's 1978 season is an anomaly? To see just how much of an anomaly Dave Tomlin's 1978 season was, let's compare it to other seasons all time. Among all pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball to win at least 9 games in a single season, Tomlin's ERA is the 73rd worst mark, his adjusted ERA the 4th worst mark, and his war the 5th worst mark. FYI, the 4 pitchers with a lower war all had such seasons prior to 1890. So yeah, it's probably the worst season ever by a pitcher to win at least 9 games, at least in the modern era. What about that winning percentage though? A 900 winning percentage, even in a sample size of 10 games, is highly impressive. In the history of Major League Baseball, there have been only 51 occurrences of a pitcher achieving a 900 or higher winning percentage with at least 10 decisions in a single season. Tomlin's ERA is more than a full run higher than the second worst mark, his adjusted ERA over 30 points lower, and his war over 3 points lower. That stat alone might be the biggest shocker. Nobody in this group has a below zero war outside Tomlin, and he's not even close to a zero war mark. Lest we forget, Tomlin also achieved this all in a limited amount of innings, as his 62 and a third innings total is the second lowest of this group. Tomlin somehow is a part of this exclusive group of pitchers with a 900 or higher winning percentage, yet is the only one that stands out. He wasn't just bad, he was horrendous. It's amusing to see that of this group of 51 pitchers, the player with the highest ERA and the player with the lowest ERA have identical records in nearly identical amount of innings pitched and games played. Speaking of innings pitched, 9 wins in only 62 and a third innings does not happen often. Among all pitchers in MLB history with 62 and a third or fewer innings pitched in a single season, Tomlin's 9 victories are the second most ever, and he's just one of 14 pitchers to achieve at least 9 wins. I don't think I need to explain again just how much worse Tomlin was compared to others in this group, as you probably get the picture by now. The big question still remains, 
How is it possible for such a terrible pitcher to win that many games while also losing so few? One reason is the team he was on. In 1978, the Cincinnati Reds were one of the best teams in the league, boasting a 92-69 and record, including the second best hitting in the National League in terms of runs scored per game. Since the Reds gave a good amount of run support to their pitchers, it provided opportunities to win many games and avoid losses. For Tomlin in particular, there were two occurrences in which he earned a win despite allowing multiple earned runs. This includes a game against the Houston Astros in which he blew a ninth inning save but the Reds rallied in the bomb half to win the game. The other occurrence was a game in which Cincinnati scored six runs in the bomb of the ninth to rally back for the victory. Tomlin, who gave up multiple runs in the top half of the ninth, was the pitcher on record and therefore earned the victory. While ample run support is the reason why Tomlin earned a couple of wins, it's only part of the explanation behind the lack of losses. The main reason why Tomlin avoided so many losses, despite a high ERA, is due to situations he pitched in. Out of 57 games pitched in 1978, 34 of them came while the Reds were losing. That includes over 200 plate appearances while trailing and only 79 while winning. You can't lose any games if you come into the game while your team is already losing. Tomlin also mostly pitched when the game was quote unquote out of reach. As you can see from this graph, Tomlin faced way more batters when the score was within 3 or more runs as opposed to fewer than 3 runs. This includes only 23 play appearances with the game tied. Coming into a tied game to pitch is the easiest and most abundant method to earn a decision, so Tomlin simply did not have many opportunities to do so. That explains why he had so few losses, but what about those 9 wins? Did I not just say Tomlin had such few opportunities to get a decision? That is true, but the reason why Tomlin won so many games was simply, he was very, very, very lucky. I looked at all 9 of Tomlin's wins, and let's just say, he owes the Reds hitters a lot of favors. In 2 of those 9 wins, he came into the game in the ninth inning or later, and the Reds scored the go-ahead run in the following half inning. In 6 of those wins, Tomlin entered the game while the Reds were losing, and Cincinnati proceeded to score multiple runs in the following half inning to take the lead for good. That includes 5 of those 6 games in which Tomlin came into the game while the Reds were down multiple runs. To repeat that, 5 times in 1978 did Tomlin enter a game while his team was losing by 2 or more runs and the Reds took the lead for good in the next half inning. That ninth and final victory was the blown save turned win I mentioned earlier in the video. That's basically the explanation of his record. Tomlin had very few opportunities to lose games, and in various games where he came into pitch with a deficit, the Reds hitters got hot and scored many runs. There will probably never be a season like Tomlin's 1978 campaign ever again. From a win-loss record, that season is one of a kind. Nobody has ever had such a fantastic winning percentage despite such a poor season. It's one of the luckiest pitching seasons ever in the history of Major League Baseball.